dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on more than 1,000 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Constance Moore in Almost a Lady, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where your motion picture favorites appear in plays we know you'll enjoy. The lovely motion picture actress, Constance Moore, is our proudly we hailed star. Connie appears in our comedy, Almost a Lady, as Nora McGrath, efficient young secretary with an ambition to climb the ladder to high society. Obstacle, one fiery temper. We'll raise the curtain on Act One right after this brief message from Wendell Niles. Men, there's adventure in Japan, and you can be right there and be paid for it at the same time. Two well-known U.S. Army outfits stationed in Japan are looking for top-flight men. You can enlist directly for either of these divisions. They are the 1st Cavalry and the 11th Airborne. As a member of either of these units, your pay will be plenty high. Take advantage of this now, men. Find out at your local U.S. Army recruiting station if you can qualify. And now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of Almost a Lady, starring Constance Moore as Nora McGrath. <laughs> An orphan, raised in a fondling home until she reached the legal working age, Norma McGrath had been forced to fight for everything she wanted. And for as long as she could remember, Nora had had two driving ambitions, to become the best possible legal secretary, a goal she had attained, and to become a lady. Occasionally, Nora's fiery Irish temper ran away with her, and she forgot the latter ambition. So I told the big ape, if I wasn't positively busting with gentility and refinement, I'd spill your front teeth all over this office. Mm, always the lady. Uh, so I forgot temporarily. Look, I was plenty fed up with running around that desk. I told him I was hired as a secretary. I'm no babysitter for tired old juvenile delinquents. <sighs> I can just imagine how much your boss enjoyed that. Eileen, uh, where do you go to register for unemployment insurance? Well, after all, you can't blame him for firing you. Not after that. Well, he didn't fire me. His wife did. Oh. She happened to walk into the office just as I was telling him off. Well, believe me, this running around desk is getting very monotonous. Say, Nora, there's a job open in my office. Oh, thanks, honey. It's nice of you to mention it, but... Well, but what? Well, I, I don't exactly fit in a high-tone law office like that. And why not? Oh, you can handle the work better than any secretary they've ever had. And besides, you're my roommate. That won't hurt. Maybe, but... Well, Mr. Graham's one of those Sunday supplement socialites, and... Well, I wouldn't know how to talk to his clients. Oh, that's ridiculous. Of course, if... If I could get a job in a place like that, I... Oh, I might learn to be a lady by watching people. Ah, oh, look, you'll come to the office with me in the morning and forget this silly inferiority complex. Well, Mr. Graham will see you now, Nora. Oh, gosh, wish me luck. Oh, good luck, Nora, and I'll keep my fingers on Yes? Uh, Mr. Graham? Oh, yes, yes. Come on in, Miss McGrath. Thank you. Hmm. Miss Randall has given you the highest possible recommendation, Miss McGrath. <laughs> well, Eileen's a friend of mine, Mr. Graham. Mm hmm. Uh, tell me about your most recent experience. <sighs> Mr. Graham, it was awful. I beg your pardon? Well, my boss. Oh, you wouldn't be interested. Well, on the contrary, I'm very interested. Well, my, my boss was too good a track man around the office, and. Well, I'm just not the athletic type. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? No, no, not at all. Why do you think you'd like to work in this office? Well, because I could learn so much. After, uh, after eight years' experience? Oh, well, I don't mean about the work. I could do that with my brains behind my back. 
I mean, learn how to talk and walk and wear clothes and, well, you know, act like a real lady. I'm afraid I don't quite follow you. Well, I, I mean by watching your clients. You're a gentleman. Your clients are a cinch to be ladies and gentlemen. And, well, I'd rather work in this office, Mr. Graham, than, well, anything. I see. Uh, would you be interested in starting on the basis of a two-week trial? Oh, well, anything you say, Mr. Graham. Could you start today? Just as soon as I get my coat off. Very well, Miss McGrath. Let's get to work, huh? Oh, gosh. You mean that you'll... That I... Oh, Mr. Graham. <laughs> hey, please, Miss McGrath. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Graham. <laughs> Truly, I am. I, I didn't mean to kiss you. It's just that... Eileen! <laughs> Such an Was anything girl. wrong? Anything wrong? Eileen, I'm young. I'm lovely. I'm engaged. On a two-week trial. Is that all for this evening, Mr. Graham? Yes, thank you, Miss McGrath. Well, good night. Good night. And, oh, you, you might like to know that I think Miss Randall's recommendation doesn't begin to do you justice. Oh, do you really mean that? Yes. Uh, now... Uh, now, don't get too impulsively grateful, Miss McGrath. You, I'm expecting my fiancée, and she might not understand the situation if you were to walk in and find you kissing me. Oh, don't worry about that. I won't ever kiss you again. No, please. Please, as a, as a matter of fact, I, I rather enjoyed it. You did? Well, well gee, I, I wasn't half trying. I... <coughs> Perhaps uh, some other time, Miss McGrath. Hmm? Uh, will you file all the papers, you... please? Uh, good evening, Veronica. Good evening, Robert. Oh, yikes. I, uh, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Why, no, no. Miss McGrath and I were just finishing for the day. Uh, Miss McGrath, I'd like you to meet my fiancé, Miss Williams. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. How do you do? You're new here, aren't you? Yes, yes, she started this morning. A wonderful, wonderful secretary. I have two. Uh, <clears throat> if there's... Nothing else, Mr. Graham. I'll go now. All right, Miss McGrath. I'll, uh, I'll see you in the morning, huh? Good night, Mr. Graham. Good night, Miss Williams. I'm very happy to have met you. I'll bet she's happy to have met me. What do you mean by that, Veronica? What do you think I mean? I don't like the way she looked at you when she said good night. <laughs> you don't like the way any secretary looks at me. And for very good reason. I'll tell you about it someday. In the meantime, darling... I wish you'd find another secretary. Oh, hello, Nora. Gee, you're pretty late. Mm-hmm. Today was the end of my two weeks' trial. Oh, yes, I know. Or say, Mr. Graham didn't fire you, did he? Oh, no. Mm -mm. Well, I didn't think he would because he was so pleased with your work, but... Well, I was afraid that Miss Williams he's engaged to might have forced him to let you go. As a matter of fact, he, uh, he took me to dinner tonight. Oh. Well, then what are you so down in the mouth about? <sighs> Nothing. Say, you haven't fallen in love with him, have you? He's engaged. That doesn't answer my question. Well, what if I have? I'm sorry, Nora. Why? I'm not. At least I can be near him all day. I wonder. What do you mean? Well, you've never been very clever at disguising your feelings. And if Veronica Williams ever sees that soft, starry gleam in your eye, you'll be out of that office so fast you won't know how it happened. Good morning, madam. May I help you? Perhaps. Are you, uh, Nora McGrath? Yes. I thought so. I'm Bob Graham's mother. Bob's... Oh, I'm pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Why? Well... You're not pleased to meet me at all. You're scared to death. I am not. Why should I be? Well, you shouldn't. I just wondered if you had a temper to go with those eyes. Oh, it'll be the ruination of me. <laughs> Mr. Graham's in his office with Miss Williams. He doesn't want anybody but... I mean, any interruptions, but I'm sure that doesn't include you. I haven't anything important to see him about. Uh, step over there, child, and let me have a look at you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can see why Veronica's jealous. Say, what's going on here? That's what I came here to learn. Are you in love with my son? 
What? Of course not. <laughs> Liar. Well, what if I am? Doesn't mean anything. He's engaged to Miss Williams. I see. And naturally, you wouldn't try to come between them. Oh, he doesn't even know that I'm alive, except as a secretary. I was a secretary once. So what? Secretary to Bob's father. And he was engaged to another girl when I started to work for him. So I know pretty well what a scheming secretary can do. What do you want me to do, quit? No. Oh, that's good, because I won't. The only way anyone will ever get me out of this job is by getting Mr. Graham to fire me. And that might happen. I told you Veronica was very jealous. Well, why should she be? Because Bob talks about you so much. He... He talks about me? To her? Well, whenever I'm with them, it seems that most of his conversation begins and ends with, uh, Miss McGrath did this, or Miss McGrath said that. Oh, so that's why she hates me. It helps. Oh, Mrs. Graham, you don't really think it's possible that... Well, Mr. Graham could... Uh, no, 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 he isn't yet. Oh. A at least he doesn't realize. But he will if you keep your job. Oh. And you've come to ask him to fire me? I came here to look you over. Well, I think you'd make a much better daughter-in-law than that skinny witch he's engaged to. Mrs. Graham! Uh, I'm only interested in my son's happiness, Miss McGrath. And I think he'd be much happier married to you. Oh, I'm sure he would. At least I'm sure I would. Uh, why do you think so, Mrs. Graham? Because a blind woman could see that you're head over heels in love with him. And Veronica will never be in love with anyone except Veronica. Do you have any ideas about how I can muscle in, get Bob's interest? Do just exactly what you have been doing. Uh, teach him to depend on you. Mm -hmm. uh, let him know that you think he's wonderful. Oh, I do. Well, let it show. Uh, but how can I compete with Veronica? Miss Williams. She has position and money, and one of her dresses costs more than my whole wardrobe. Mm, perhaps. But if Bob's half the man his father was, he won't be nearly as interested in dresses as he in, is in the, the way they're filled. Yeah, but aside from that... Aside from that, my dear, who cares? Oh, gee, Mrs. Graham, I owe you a lot. We're just thinking about being married to... It's like a little glimpse of heaven. It'll be just the opposite if Veronica guesses what you're up to. I, I don't know just the right words to tell you, Mrs. Graham, but... Well, if, if Bob should be sucker enough to fall for me, I'll work and study and keep my temper until I'm the gall-darndest lady you ever saw. Yes, Mr. Graham? Is anyone waiting to see me, Miss McGrath? No. Then will you come in, please? Oh, shall I bring my book? No, no, just come in. Yes, Mr. Graham? I, I think this is all very silly, Miss McGrath, but uh, but my fiancé thinks it's important, so I... Oh, I tell you, Veronica, the whole thing's ridiculous. Ask her, darling. Oh, all right. Miss Williams seems to think, Miss McGrath, that you... Down it, Veronica, I can't do it. Then I will. What Mr. Graham is trying to say is that I think you're in love with him, Miss McGrath. I told her it was idiotic, Nora, but What's I can't... What's idiotic about it? Well, the whole idea... I. Good heavens, you're not. Apparently, you're the only one who doesn't know it. Now, do you think I was making myself look ridiculous, Robert? I... I'm afraid not. I'm terribly sorry, Miss McGrath. I'm not. Under... Under the circumstances, I... I don't believe it would be advisable for you to continue as my secretary. I... I suppose not. Well, you can't blame a gal for hoping. Goodbye, Nora. Bye. I hope I see you again sometime, Miss Williams. Over on my side of the tracks. And if I do, I'll claw you ball-headed. We pause briefly from our story, Almost a Lady, starring Constance Moore to bring you an important message from your government. Men, there's a real thrill to flying, and there's a real thrill to being a member of Uncle Sam's great Air Force. Well, here's how you can get into it. The next Air Force Aviation Cadet Pilot Training class starts in July. You may be in that class if you meet the following requirements. 
you must be unmarried, 20 to 26 and a half years old, and have credit for at least two years of college. The Air Force will give you an equivalent examination for the college requirement if you wish. If you qualify, you'll learn to fly all types of Air Force planes. Upon completion of your cadet training, you'll be commissioned as second lieutenant in the U.S. Air Force Reserve, and you'll win those coveted pilot's wings. So men, take advantage of this great opportunity. Get your application for aviation cadet pilot training right away. You can obtain yours at any U.S. Air Force base or U.S. Air Force recruiting station. The curtain rises on act two of Almost a Lady, starring Constance Moore as Nora McGrath. When Nora admitted that she loved her boss, Bob Graham, Nora lost her job because Bob was engaged to another girl. It's almost a week later, and heartbroken Nora hasn't even tried to find another job. Her roommate, Eileen Randall, has been trying to cheer her up. Oh, I wonder who it is. Well, you might answer and see. I don't want to talk to anybody. You go. Uh, well, of all the lazy... Oh, coming. Good evening, Miss Randall. Why, Mrs. Graham. Is Miss McGrath in? Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, won't you come in, please? Thank you. Good evening, Miss McGrath. Good evening. Will you sit down? Oh, thank you. <sighs> I, uh, I've just learned that you were no longer Bob's secretary. That's all over. I thought you loved him. I did. Did? All right, I do. Yet you've given him up to Veronica without a struggle. What could I do? I was fired, so I couldn't see him at the office. There's no other way for me to see him. You might have tried to reach me. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Graham. I fight my own battles. Well, that's a fine quality. But uh, this happens to be my battle, too. Yours? It's not just a question of my son's happiness now, but mine as well. When uh, Veronica Williams walks into my house and right before me tells my son that as soon as they're married, she's going to change everything in that house, it definitely becomes my battle, too. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I, I'll go out for a walk or something. Oh, that's not necessary, Miss Randall. Uh, but this is so private. It won't be after tonight. Nora and I are going after that Williams snip, tooth and nail. That is, if you're willing, Nora. Willing? Oh, gee, Mrs. Graham, of course I'm willing, but... Well, what can I do? Come out to the house with me. Hmm? I'm hiring you as my companion, Nora. Companion? Me? A companion for you? Why not? Well, what can we be companionable about? <laughs> well, we can always compare our notes as secretaries. Yeah. You know, uh, I've run around a few desks myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you'll get your things together, we'll be on our way. The car's waiting. <laughs> Well, Bob, what do you think of my new companion? Oh, I think she's wonderful. Uh, but then I always did. Oh? By the way, uh, where is she this morning? In her room. Uh, she's not ill, is she? Oh, oh, no, no, no. Good morning, Mrs. Graham. Good morning, Mr. Graham. Good morning, Nora. I, I was afraid you were ill. You were? You were afraid I was ill? Gee, I mean, thank you for your concern. Is that right, Mrs. Graham? <laughs> Well, what's so funny? <laughs> you. Why don't you be yourself, Nora? You're wonderful enough, just as you are. That's the first sensible thing you've said in months. Coffee, Nora. Please. Well, uh, I, I'd better be running along. You said that before. Well, I... Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, Nora. Goodbye, Robert. If we just had a little more time, Nora, I, I think we'd make it. Bob's never really been in love with Veronica. And how'd they get engaged? Oh, just drifted into it with a little help from Veronica's mother. They grew up together, went to school together, and, well, it became a habit to be together. Well, now they'll be married in less than two weeks. You don't have to remind me. I've been doing a lot of thinking, Mrs. Graham. And and... So have I. Nothing's come of it. Well, I've decided to go away. Quitting? I guess you could call it that, but it's not really. It's just that I love Bob too much to make him unhappy. And he is going to marry Veronica. 
I don't think it's fair for me to stay on here and keep her out of her husband's house. What makes you think you're keeping her out? I heard you and Bob talking this morning. My things are packed. If you'll just have the car take me home. All right, Nora. I, I guess there's nothing we can do. I'll have Webley put your things in the car and be waiting for you. We'll have some more coffee before you go. Well, thank you for everything, Mrs. Graham. Oh, you've nothing to thank me for, my dear. Oh, yes, I have. You've taught me to be, well, almost a lady and, Veronica, and to keep my temper and... I wonder. Well, now, Veronica, I've explained to you... I've many... listened to enough explanations. I've come here to get some action. So you're still here, you cheap little... Veronica! That's all right, Bob. She yells enough, maybe she'll get it all out of her system and forget it. Sneaking in here behind my back. She didn't sneak in here, Veronica. I brought her. You keep out of this, Mrs. Graham. I'm going to have a long talk with you after I chase this little... Oh, get her out of here. That I want to see. Oh, I know that you're on her side. You've done everything you could to keep Bob from marrying me. Don't pay any attention to what she says, Mother. She's hysterical. It runs in her family. I'm not hysterical. I know what's been going on. My mother's told me a few things. You know, your father was engaged to my mother when your mother went to work for him as his secretary. Believe me, we know all about secretaries. <gasps> Why, you slap me, will you? Well, I'll pull every hair out of your head. Anytime you feel lucky, you go right ahead. Stop this, both of you. I, I saw Webley waiting in the car for you, Nora. I, I think you better go. All right. I'm... I'm terribly sorry this happened. So am I, Bob. Terribly sorry. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Graham. But why do you have to leave town, Nora? After all, it's a big city. You, you aren't apt to run into them. I don't want to see anything that even reminds me of the Mylene. I still love the guy. You mean even after he ordered you out of his house? Oh, uh, what else could he do? Oh. Oh, gee, I'm going to miss you, Nora. I'm going to miss you, too, honey. I'm sorry I ever got you that job in the office. Oh, I'm not. What's that old thing about better to have loved and lost? Well, I've loved. I can't take that away from me. Yeah. Oh. Uh, there's the taxi. You, you got everything? Well, if you'll just help me with the suitcase. All right. We heard you just a second. Oh, that hat box, Eileen. Get it, will you? Sure. Oh, this darn suitcase was so heavy, I couldn't get to the door. Bob. Yes, Nora. What are you doing here? I came to talk to you about, about what happened at the house. Why? I was there. Well, after you left... Veronica and Mother and I, we... <laughs> Gave me a real working over, huh? Will you stop talking and listen? No, why should I? Because I'm trying to tell you something important. You told me all I need to know when you told me to leave. Well, I'm leaving. I'm getting out of town, and furthermore, I don't <laughs> want to... <laughs> oh, now stand still, will you? If I can't keep you quiet any other way, I'll use force. What I came here to tell you is that Veronica and Mother and I all agreed that there was no point in thinking further of our marriage. Ooh, now... Yeah. Now, if I take my hand away, will you listen to the rest quietly? Mm-hmm. All right. Now I'll... I'll tell you the rest of it. I love you, Nora. Will you marry me? Oh, Nora, if you don't hurry up and say yes, then say help me, I'll hit you with your suitcase. Oh, shut up, Eileen. Bob knows the answer. I just have to take my time. Like a lady. <laughs> Curtain falls in the final act of Almost a Lady. Our star, Constance Moore, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. High school graduates, what of the future? Have you chosen your career yet? The U.S. Army offers you a mighty fine career. You'll have an interesting job in a field of your own choosing. You'll receive high pay right from the start. You'll have plenty of chances for advancement and security, both during your Army career and afterwards and you'll be able to go on with your schooling. 
Many educational opportunities are afforded the soldier through the United States Armed Forces Institute. Remember, too, that as a high school graduate, you can pick the Army technical schooling you want even before you sign up. And that doesn't obligate you to enlist, either. So plan your career now. Find out all the opportunities available for you in the Army. The man at your local U.S. Army recruiting station will be glad to talk it over with you. See him at your first convenience. Now back to our star, Constance Moore, and our producer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the curtain call. We'd like to thank Constance Moore for her splendid performance and have you meet our charming star informally. Thank you, C.P. You know, I saw something interesting the other day that concerned you. Yes? It was in the Eddie Cantor's recent picture, If You Knew Susie. <laughs> Wasn't that flashback something? <laughs> it was. The idea was to recall vaudeville days. It was the sextet from Lucia number we made five years ago with Eddie in show business. That's right. There were you, George Murphy, Joan Davis, and Eddie. Well, the old five-a-day is history. Don't you believe it, C.P. I just came back from a tour. What were your reactions to those 12 weeks of personal appearances? It was a great experience. I really enjoyed it. Now I know what it means to do five shows a day. And what it means to be home. Yes, with my cute family. Yes, little Gina and Michael and... And Johnny, of course. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Husband, actor's agent, part-time architect, and chef, you think? <laughs> but a gourmet who runs a close second to you in the culinary department. We both like to cook, C.P. Real spicy dishes. In fact, anything with onions and garlic in it. All the time? Well, <laughs> almost. <laughs> I understand that your tastes also are the same in music. Yes, indeed. We're record collectors. We collect everything from Kachaturian to Rogers and Hart, and Beethoven to Benny Goodman. You must enjoy music to appreciate such variety. Well, I think you miss so much limiting your musical taste. We prefer to humor our moods. You know, all music can be enjoyed. Real enjoyment of the theater, radio, motion pictures is an appreciation of comedy as well as drama. And in music, everything... From Bach to Boogie. <laughs> Connie, I want to thank you again for a fine performance. Oh, it was fun, C.P. Now, before I leave, what's the playbill for next week? Next week, we present the story of an ambitious prize fighter, Terry McGee, who mixes modeling and writing with some pretty tough ring opponents. That popular motion picture star, George Montgomery, will be our star who portrays the well-placed Irish self-confidence of Terry and the Manhattan Mauler. Hmm, sounds intriguing. I'll be sure to listen. Goodbye, C.P. Goodbye, Connie. Goodbye. <laughs> Join us next week, won't you, ladies and gentlemen, when we present the exciting drama, The Manhattan Mauler, starring George Montgomery. Until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Constance Moore appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The story was by Bill Hampton with the orchestra directed by Eddie Scrivanek. Remember, proudly we hail next time presents George Montgomery. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>